So you want to make some gorgeous models that look immaculate in both Blender and Roblox Studio, but every time you try, your model ends up looking like a cactus took its anger out on a piece of chewing gum. As ChatGPT would say, it's as visually pleasing as a salad made entirely of croutons. And on top of that, you have no clue how to bring it into Roblox Studio. So today, we're going to fix all of that with four essential tips for using Blender with Roblox Studio. Let's go. For tip 1, we're going to cover model importing, which basically means how to bring your model from Blender to Roblox Studio. Start by selecting your model and separating it so that each part of the model that you want to be a different color is a different mesh. This can be done by adding loop cuts and subdividing your mesh, selecting the area you want separated, right clicking, and hitting separate by selection. Nice! Now just do that for every component. Once you're done, box select all the components. I usually like to move them around for a second just to be sure that I've actually selected everything. Now press File, Export, and FBX. Give your file a gorgeous little name. Now change the scale to something like .02 and make sure Selected Objects is checked. Once that's done, just open up Roblox Studio real quick. Three to five business days later, Roblox Studio is open. Go ahead and click on Import 3D on the top menu and locate the Blender file that you're trying to import. Once it's ready, be sure that all the components that you separated are showing up on the sidebar, otherwise you might have forgotten to select one. From there, you can just kind of mess with these settings. I usually disable adding the model to my inventory and make sure it's anchored, but honestly, you can pick whatever you want. I've never really tried them all, but who knows? Maybe one of them does something cool. Let me know if you find something. Now, just click Import. You can scale it and move it around as needed, but as you can see, we successfully imported all the components from Blender. Okay, now on to tip number two. <laughs> tip number two is about coloring your objects in Roblox Studio. It's really, really simple. Just click the different mesh parts and change their color on the sidebar. You can also switch up their material, which can give you some pretty cool results. I experimented for a few minutes with a couple different materials and colors, seeing if I could make anything decent looking. There's not a whole lot to say on coloring though. I mean, it's pretty important, but the process is super simple. Just mess around with these materials and colors until you're happy. Alrighty, on to tip number three. Tip number three is all about keeping your models low poly in Blender. If you watched my model importing errors video, then you know that a mesh can't go over 10,000 tries in Roblox Studio. In other words, Roblox Studio can only handle like really low poly meshes. So let's take a high poly mesh, like this random object I made. Man, it's disgusting. All those unnecessary vertices. Ugh. But hey, we can fix it with the ever-cherished Decimate modifier. You can choose between collapsing, unsubdividing, or planaring your mesh. They're all just different ways of removing extra vertices without disrupting the mesh too much. For instance, I went with the collapse here, and I was able to shave over 10,000 tries off of my mesh. I do recommend shading it smooth afterward though, since it covers up any, like, tiny errors in the geometry. To show you the power of the decimate modifier, I put these two meshes side by side. And as you can see, they look identical but one has 10,000 fewer tries than the other. While the decimate modifier is really handy, there's a couple other tricks that can save you some vertices. Whenever you import a new mesh, click on the tiny little side menu on the left and turn the vertice count way down. When using spheres, I recommend just using icospheres and shading them smooth. And whenever you use cylinders, I'd just take the side count down to maybe 10 or 11 or even lower. Just auto smooth it afterwards and it'll look fine. With these methods in mind, it should be way easier for you to keep your meshes low poly. Alrighty, on to the last Last tip. The final tip is using reference images. Start by finding a 2D image of what you're trying to model and download it. Now in Blender, press numpad 1 on your keyboard and go to a 2D view. Now press shift A, image, reference, and locate your image. Scale it and move it around until it looks good. Now add in your mesh to trace the image. This is usually a cube, but it can be anything you want really. The trick is to extrude, bevel, loop cut, and move vertices around until your mesh perfectly aligns with the reference image. It takes some time and practice to get good at this, but once you do, being able to replicate models through reference image tracing will make 3D modeling 10 times as easy for you. You might have to fix a few proportions yourself since tracing can never be perfect, but overall it'll save you a ton of time and help you visualize an object's proportions way better. As another example of this, I gave a cube a subsurf modifier and started tracing a plane with it. This is one instance though where a perfectly flat cube would not be the best option to trace with. I added the subsurf modifier because it gave a little bit of a curve to the outside of the cube which kind of matched the plane. Well I think that's going to do it for reference images. So I think that's going to do it for the video. I hope you all learned something today and have a great day.